Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm not too bad now. And yourself? I'm very good. Listen, thank you so, so much for zooming in. And now I probably should change that to, you know, hurdling in or something. I should be representing <laughs> Or jumping in, even better. Um, or yeah, absolutely. Tonight, uh, to, to tell me your little um, brave action story. I'm thrilled that you've, that you've agreed to share one with us. So off you go. No problem. No problem. Yeah, like it was uh, when I was kind of trying to think of, you know, putting myself in that kind of brave sort of brave action sort of uh, situation. It was difficult to try and think of one because I don't think of... Well, I, like I don't put myself in that bracket as being brave. Sometimes I put myself down as being a wimp. But um, but I was kind of thinking back over say my journey, and obviously like my my probably my biggest moment on the track so far was in in Rio in 2016, um, where I finished fourth, ran 47.97 over the 400 meter hurdles, which you know kind of catapulted me into crazy crazy territory. Um, but it very very nearly didn't happen. Um, because I picked up an injury um, in a roundabout, I think it was March. Um, I picked up a, a, a hip injury, and we couldn't we couldn't get to the bottom of it. So in 2015, I had a really good year. I had you know con- a really really consolidating year, running fast on the world stage. I had gotten my, myself onto the Diamond League um, uh, t- timetables. You know. Uh, week in week out and I was really starting to make a name for myself and kind of pushing you know and rubbing shoulders with all the the big boys in the sport Um, and my time you know my 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 PB was getting better and better with each run and and it came to the world championships that year in 2015 and I just missed out on the final so I was kind of you know pushing towards the year before an Olympic Games and there was a lot of chat a lot of talk a lot of media coverage over Olympics and you know I was kind of being tipped for you know, a, a, a competitor um, on the Olympic stage. And, you know, I started to believing it and believing in myself and believing in what people were saying. And, you know, I really knuckled down for training that year and put in pretty good winter. Um, and, you know, there was obviously more and more talk over this this Olympics and, and how it was just building up to be a really, really big year for me. Which I obviously wanted it to be, you know, because all my training is based around a four-year cycle. So, I kind of wanted to be coming into peak peak shape and peak form for for that year, say. Um, and training was going really well, um, and came to about March time and picked up this this uh, phantom hip injury that we just could not myself, my physio coaches could not get uh, to grips with. Um, and the weeks were slipping by, and and initially, you know, I was kind of like, okay, I pick up injuries now and again, and usually within a week or two or maybe three weeks, they they subside. And, and I am able to actually, you know, bounce back from injury quite quickly. Um, but this was dragging on for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I think, you know, I've been doing all my rehab. Um, I had been, you know, doing everything that my physio Emma was telling me to do to try and get back. Um, and it just wasn't working. And I was really starting to lose faith. And I was really starting to, to kind of dig my heels in. And I felt like I was going, you know, one step forward, two steps back. And, there was just no kind of, you know, um, sign of an end of this this injury. Um, and I got in scans to say it was actually an injury we had picked up years before. Um, that was a torn, it was a tear in the cartilage in my uh, in my hip. Um, but it just reared its head at the wrong time. Um, and we eventually got, got to grips with it. And we found out that my hips were anterior tilted. So we did a huge amount of work. So this is maybe... 11, 12 weeks in and going back and forth with my physio and we've been to see specialists and we finally, finally hit the nail on the head. Um, and, and Emma was, Emma, my physio, you know, by my side the whole way through and she was like, look, you know, we're nearly there. She was, you know, keeping my head and my body in the right place to make sure that I was doing all the work and was trying to get me seeing the, the end, the end goal. Um, and so, yeah, got myself back on track by, I think I maybe had six weeks out from, from the, uh, the the Olympics at this stage, so I was kind of like, well, this this Olympics is gonna be, you know, that that dream was slipping away, and I was kind of in my head, I was like, do I want to go out there in subpar shape? You know, I haven't raced all season. The only test that I had was to go out to the European Championships and try and run a fast time out there to try and get some sort of race practice in before the Olympics. It was my only chance, and I didn't, you know, I just didn't have. 
uh, that ability that or the, the faith in my own ability uh, to go out and put, put myself on the world's biggest stage of athletics um, of sport in general um, with you know not enough training done having been tipped for for for, uh, for doing well so I I kind of sucked it up I thought okay fine this is the this is the the hand I've been dealt this is all I can do uh, with what I have and Haley, my coach and Haley and Drew my coaches you know did me up a, a schedule of training that was just going to get me fit somewhat in time they cut out a huge amount of the work that I should have had done um, and narrowed it down to a quite a quite a hap you know I wouldn't say haphazard but it was quite a an intense mix of of all the training that I needed to get done and I uh, you know I knuckled down and, and got most of it done and I was kind of really getting on that plane to Rio I, I finally I did actually get myself into a good enough shape to to think okay I can run that's about as good as I was going to be able to get I wasn't in good shape um, uh, I didn't think I was in good shape until we eventually got out there but I like the 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 thing was I wasn't sure was it a good decision for me to be getting on that plane going out to an Olympics when I wasn't in good shape and there was a lot of doubts in my mind while I was extremely excited to be going out there for the whole experience the competitor inside me the athlete inside me was saying do I want to go out there and put myself out there haven't been you know tipped for uh, for a good performance and you know there was a lot of pressure on my shoulders going into it now in fairness in hindsight that wasn't a bad thing because it took the focus off of my running. It took the pressure off of me and um, people, you know, it was a lot of support from people, which I didn't realize was there. Um, so having gone from thinking, you know, that it was going to be a waste of time. Um, and I, I was, you know, the confidence wasn't there for me to go out and run in front of hundreds of thousands of people really between the stadium and between uh, TV cameras um, and potentially, you know, completely mess up. Uh, I put that aside, went out and just thought, okay, there's a lot of support from people. Um, I can go out there and give it my best shot and, and, and see where we end up. And in the first round, I ended up getting myself a place in, in the semi-final um, and then ended up winning the semi-final in a, in a new national record. And then, you know, I was completely on a high then going into the final um, and anything could have happened. So it was kind of one of those, you know, touch and go moments uh, in, the, in the lead up to to Rio that I didn't know was I going to make it onto the plane or not. I got my ticket and then ended up going out and performing completely out of my skin. Maybe it was a, it, it was a, a blessing in disguise. The pressure was lifted off of me as the, the tipped athlete. And I ended up actually uh, going out in there and, um, and running uh, faster than I ever have. And I still haven't run as fast since. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, Tom, at the time, I think the entire nation, like, you became the, the, the kind of the, the son of the nation, you know, the golden boy that <laughs> yeah. everybody wants to support. And I think it actually, it's funny where we often think that athletes have this, you know, armor around them that protects them and makes them in some way invincible and that they're so strong and so brave all the time. And so, you know, everything, you know, just happens and they have it all under control. And I think your yeah. story really illustrates the fact that, you know, athletes are like any other human being they have as many doubts and as many kind of you know worries and sometimes yeah. they does have to kind of just you know play a hand sometimes and as you say yeah. you know your your bravest actions are sometimes the ones where you do really you know it is it is a scary time and you just kind of have to have the courage yeah. to feel the fear and do it anyway and you know see what absolutely what happens yeah so uh yeah. well listen thank you so so much for sharing that story um I think a lot no of people have known the success that you'd had and have had since, but probably wouldn't have known the underlying story in the run up to the, the actual Olympics itself. Yeah, like it was, and, yeah, it was probably my most my most stressful year, while it was also my most successful year, which they just don't seem to go hand in hand. But it was just that um, digging deep and and just trying to to, to make the best out of whatever uh, situation I was in, and that was uh, that was all I could do. Absolutely. Um, control the controllables as as we say and I'm sure Haley and Drew and your amazing coaches would have said look you just you've, you've done some work just go out and enjoy it have fun be grateful yeah. that you're here because I know yourself you were just the gratitude kind of you know piece as well that people talk about just happy and excited to be there and then as you say really you, happy you know there, yeah. sport sport we love it because of its 
you know, kind of, there's no such thing as a short thing. You know, we love the uncertainty yeah. and the kind of the drama that unfolds when people just enjoy what they do and give it a go. And that's exactly yeah. what Brave Action is all about, Absolutely. just having a go. So listen, thank having you so, so much um, for, for sharing that story with us. And um, no worries. the very best of luck. Cheers for having me on. Coming races and things like that. And, uh, and I'll chat to you again soon, okay? Thanks, Emil. Thanks a million. Cheers, Olivia. Talk to you soon.